today's the day we're getting most of these guys in the ground. This is the area where I'm gonna be planting all of my part shade plants. This is a new garden area that we're working on. Um, it is our Japanese garden, Japanese maple garden. And we're still, you know, working on taking out the sod and creating this path out of these flagstones that we've been collecting. And this is gonna be the home for all of these plants that I've been collecting. And so today I'm gonna to start finally getting them in the ground. Our yard is generally very sunny, but this Katsura Japanese maple here is going to keep growing, which will mean that this corner is going to become a shady spot. So that's what we're working on now. I'm gonna go ahead and um, even remove these edging stones here because eventually we are gonna have cobblestone um, outlining this entire area. So um, yeah, step one, remove the rest of this piece of sod in this corner here. I got some work cut out for me. So there's a combination of shade, part sun plants in this collection, and this area is kind of mixed at the moment. Our yard is primarily full sun, um, and we're working on adding shade slowly. So this Japanese maple garden has a number of Japanese maple trees that will grow over time, and their canopies will cast more shade in this area. So I'm gonna get these uh, situated. I'm gonna take out my measuring tape and kind of determine the spacing and get to planting. Oh, and stay tuned because I'm going to give you a tour with plant names after I'm done planting. I have these um, Japanese painted fern that I overwintered. I had bought these on clearance at Home Depot for half off, so maybe around $4 a piece. I have about five of them. And I have some hookara in this area also and the sensitive fern in the corner. I'm gonna dig everything up except for the sensitive fern and I'm gonna go ahead and move it down to the garden space I'm working on. to my basket that was just over here. I'm so confused right now. It's been a couple days since I've been able to finish up the work in this area. We got some rain, which was much needed and certainly helped things settle in. So today I have a couple of hostas that I'm gonna transplant from other areas in the garden, as well as some Hamlin uh, fountain grass. And so that's what I'm gonna work on this morning.
Does anybody else get distracted in the garden? I came out here with every intention on just focusing on the task at hand and here I am doing things I'm not supposed to be doing. So this is some verbena that I started from seed and I'm, I'm kind of nervous about putting it in my garden bed because they spread aggressively and I don't know how I feel about that yet. So I actually stuck one with these Cosmos in these summer containers that I did and these are white Cosmos, which by the way, recently were infested with aphids. We might have that under control now. But I went ahead and I added that verbena in there. Um, I don't know if this is too crowded, but we'll see what happens. This is the verbena, verbena bonariensis. And so I have seven left of those that I started from seed. I'm probably gonna add two more to containers and annual containers, and then I'll scatter the others in a garden bed, probably. But this is all I have left of my seedlings to plant out, which is super exciting. I added some nasturtium to the front of my window boxes, kind of as a spiller. This um, a stilpe, not a stilpe, what is this stuff called? Alyssum. Yeah, the other A. So these uh, Alyssum are filling out now and the Gomfrina is starting to put on a bloom. So that's exciting. Mindevilla started to also open up. And there's a bunch more buds. All right, enough. Now I'm going back to the project, I promise. I have this Hosta seedling that I started from bare root. I got it at Walmart. It's called um, Olive Bailey Langdon. And it's really, really tiny. I think what happens is this container gets waterlogged and I think it's rotting out the roots. So I'm gonna dig this up and put it in the garden uh, that I'm working on. And I have another one here. This one is called Yellow Polka Dot Bikini. Cute, right? Um, it's this pretty yellow with the edge of green and I bought this one as a small container maybe at Lowe's last year But again, I put them in this container because the area that I had them in kept getting these munched on by deer and rabbit So I wanted to protect them, but in reality, it's not the only one that's doing good is this one here Which I think is like the weed hosta that everyone has in their garden the one that just doesn't quit um, My mom gave me this one actually. I think it's some kind of arium marginata type pasta if you know i'd love to know please comment below and so i'm going to leave this one in here i'm probably just going to center it and i'm going to take out those two i also have this little one that has blue foliage it might be mouse ears but because i'm kind of new to hosta i can't be sure it's one that i also got from my mom so let's go ahead and get those dug up I'm gonna have to baby the other one a little bit. That one's really itty bitty. Here's the other hosta. I love this one. It's nice and big. It has serrated foliage and it's a pretty blue color. This one also came from my mom's garden, so I have no idea what it is. From looking around, it kind of looks like it might be elegance, but again, I'm taking comment and suggestions below. Let me know. So here's the hosta. I love the way that the blue looks against this yellow and some of the other colors of the hosta. So what I'm gonna do is, because this one is actually fairly large, I'm gonna divide it because that way it'll be more in line with the size of my new ones. And then by next year, they should all kind of be similar in size. Here in the front, I had planted three of these Helen Von Steen uh, lamb's ear. And what I think I'm going to do is, because I have another bed that I feel like needs a bit of contrast and color, I'm gonna remove this center one um, and I'm gonna replace it with a Hamlin grass. Um, this often happens, you know, you start planning out your bed, planting things out, and then you soon discover that there's something that maybe 
would be better suited somewhere else and it requires some moving. While not ideal, typically when you plant, you wanna kinda of just let things be. Now would be the time to do it since I only recently planted these and they haven't had a chance to root yet. So I wouldn't be really harming the plant. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this center uh, lamb's air. I'm gonna to try to split it in two and I'm gonna show you where I'm gonna put it. So on this right side shed bed, I have three Hamlin grasses. They're like a low growing uh, mounding type grass that send out these plumes in the summer. And I have, while I have different textures going on in this bed with the little lime hydrangeas, the grasses and the iris in the background, I feel like it needs some breakup in color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one out and this one out, and I'm gonna replace it with a division of the um, lamb's air. So the lamb's air looks a little sad right now um, because it just got transplanted and in fact it's a new plant that I just got this year and I just divided it. So from one container I got two um, and I think that they're going to be a really nice contrast between the texture of the foliage and the color with these little limes. It's possible that at some point the little limes are going to you know get really large and kind of cover them and then at that point I'll have to you know move them forward maybe fix the edging a little bit um, that's how it is in the garden. Things are always changing, uh, but I do think that this was a really nice change and I think I'm going to really like this here. I made a video about transplanting things in warm weather a couple of days ago and one of the tricks was to shade it after you transplant it. So I'm going to go ahead and set that table to provide a little shade to my transplant because it's getting a little sunny in this area right now. So this Hamlin grass, um, so this was one Hamlin that I bought last year and I divided it in th three segments or three divisions. And this one, when it grew back this year, has like this like dead spot. So I am going to use my Hori Hori and I'm gonna kind of like dice it up a little bit so that I can try to get rid of this part of it. Let's see how that goes. I think that looks pretty good. So I just cut that section off. I'm gonna plant it in the hole like that. I'll just kind of squeeze it together and no more dead. So that's what we took out. I have this um, Brilliance Autumn Fern that I recently bought in a uh, nursery trip and it gets to be about 18 to 24 inches tall and 18 inches wide. So what I'm gonna do is I have one that I bought for $12.95. I'm gonna go ahead and split this and make two out of it. I have this one ladies mantle that I really love. I love the leaves. I even like the color of the blooms. Um, they only had one or I would have picked up at least three, but they were $3 at a plant sale. What a deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that right there so that it can kind of grow. And once it gets big enough, I can always divide it and move it around the garden. Everything that I was holding over in Steph's Home Nursery for this project has been planted. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you where I put things and I'll give you the plant names. Start here on my right side shed bed. 
I have these two lamb's ears that I transplanted yesterday. It was one plant that I split in two. So I'm using my method of shading it for a few days, about three to five days, depending on the weather. You know, if it's sunnier, you wanna keep them on a little bit longer, but today's overcast. So I'm gonna leave these here for a couple of days, keep them watered and they should do fine. So those lamb's ear I think will look really nice in this bed because they'll offer some blue interest in a different contrast in terms of texture against the iris and the little lime hydrangeas. Moving over here to the entrance of our path, I planted a Hanakloa. This one's called um, Aria, I'll show you the tag. And it's a variegated gold and green Japanese forest grass. And I love the way that these look and they're gonna get larger so that eventually my goal is for them to overhang and soften the entrance of the pathway. I have this lady's mantle. I only have one, so I planted it here. This is sort of a temporary spot. I'm gonna see how it does in my garden, um, if it spreads, and hopefully it, you know, it's happy and it gets larger and then I can divide it and kind of spread it around. I planted a drift of some hookara that I've been collecting. The first one there is called Carnival Watermelon and it has almost like a peach sheen to it. And the next three here, I purchased at a nursery that I went to a few weeks back and it's called Hookara Carnival Peach Parfait. And this one gets to be about 10 to 12 inches um, high or you know the, the height of it and then 14 to 16 wide. And I have three of those. And then I have a um, Wild Berry Dolce Wild Berry uh, by Proven Winners. And, um, you know, it's looking a little sad. I had it in a container last year. I overwintered it in my vegetable garden and I just planted it out here. So I'm hoping that it starts to put on some new growth as well as this one here. This one um, is a dark foliage one also by Proven Winners. Um, the name is escaping me, but I'm gonna look it up and I'll put it on the screen. But that one is really small. So I actually put this that I use as a wire cloche. This is a waste basket from the Dollar Tree and I put over it um, to protect it from the bunnies because it's really small. I don't think that it could take much nibbling. So I'm gonna protect it for now. I have these Jack Frost Heartleaf Brunnera that I put as a drift here. And right behind that, I have a guacamole hosta. So I think that the colors in this bed look really beautiful with the chartreuse yellow and then the silvery foliage from the Brunnera and then this layer of the Hookara. The foliage texture of this Hakoni grass. And the ladies mantle. So I'm really happy with the way this looks. Eventually I would like to add some more um, ferns. I think that's the only thing that this bed is missing is a drift of some fern for a different texture along the front here right behind the cobble. I have a couple of evergreens in this garden bed as well. This is a blue spruce, a weeping blue spruce. This was my Mother's Day gift last year and it just put on a bunch of new growth, which is really great. And I have a Fire Chief Arborvitae in this corner. Now, all of these stones are just really just placed here. None of this is actually done yet. We're still in the process of, you know, collecting more cobblestone as well as more flagstone. So all of the stonework that you see around this area is just very temporary. None of it is finished, but I wanted to get these plants planted so that I don't have to worry so much about, you know, hand watering them throughout the whole summer. At least here, the weather will mostly take care of them. They are more insulated with the mulch around them, and I'll just have to water them right now in the beginning for a couple of weeks and then just periodically if we don't get a lot of rain. Here's an all gold Hanakloa grass. So this one is not variegated. This one is just solid gold. 
And again, I chose to put this one in a corner, kind of where the walkway bends so that it can kind of spill over the edge. So I have another uh, Fire Chief Arborvitae on this corner. So I put one on either side to flank the walkway. Now this area gets more sun, which is good for these shrubs because they will keep this um, kind of fiery orange copper color, which is really interesting for an evergreen. Moving over to this larger bed, the other things that I planted were, I have a variegated Carex grass here in the corner. It is green and white. I don't have the exact variety on this one because a friend gave it to me as a division from their yard. This is a Hinoki Cypress Pygmia. I've been overwintering this for a year. I got this last year at Home Depot around 4th of July. They had put their shrubs 50% off and I paid $15 for this. It was originally $29.98 and it has beautiful texture and it hasn't grown much. So it's a very slow growing evergreen and I think it'll be perfect for this area since we don't want things to get too large. We wanna keep everything kind of on the dwarf size here. Here along the front, I have a drift of Japanese painted fern. These were another plant that I overwintered. I have three here and I have another two there. They get to be about a foot tall and wide, so kind of small, which I think will be perfect for the edge. And I overwintered these. I got them on clearance at Home Depot last year for about $4 a piece. So I had an idea of putting them in this garden, but we weren't ready yet because we were still lifting sod. So I overwintered them in the veggie garden. This is a new Hinoki that I purchased recently at Home Depot. This one is called Costeri, and it has this beautiful like emerald green and like a brighter green um, foliage, and it stays dwarf. This one also only gets to be about 36 inches tall and wide. Here's that other grass, and this one has a tag, so I'll show you what it's called. Areola, Japanese forest grass. Spinning to this area here, I have some um, ferns. I actually split these. This is one Autumn Brilliance fern that I split into two and I'll just have to keep an eye on it, keep it watered. And I think these are gonna be really pretty because they have this like orangey, bronzy color in the foliage. Those bare root peonies or peonies that I purchased from Longfield Gardens um, have started to put up their foliage. This one is a Cora Louise Ito Peony and I have a Julia Ann on the other side. Let me give you a different angle of this bed. So here it is. In the center there, I had taken out, I had a drift of three lamb's air. This is the Helen Von Steen lamb's air. I wanted to kind of break that up. So what I did was I took out that one that was there. I split it in two and put it in that shed bed where we started. And I added this Hamlin grass, I moved it to this area. So I think that's really nice because it kind of varies, it breaks up the texture. And now I have the lamb's ear, the grass, lamb's ear, this golden um, spruce here. It's a weeping golden spruce, similar to a Skylands. And then I have another grass there. So it kind of repeats the pattern. That's also a Hamlin grass, that one's a little bit smaller. So the way I have these set up is the front is the grass, then I have the lamb's hair, and then I have, I dotted two of the ferns and the peony in the center. In the very middle of this bed, I have a little honey oak leaf hydrangea. And I protected it with a wastebasket also, a cloche, because I was afraid that it would get nibbled on and it's very young. So pretty soon I'm gonna have to put some other type of cloche around it because it's outgrowing that one. 
but I love that it has yellow foliage and it's dwarf. It only gets three to four feet tall and wide. So I think it'll look really nice if it survives to kind of fill out this corner. For hostas, I have the, um, that one there is called Francis something. I'll flash it on the screen, but I really like the foliage. I love when they have, um, you know, the ribbing. I've heard that it also is less attractive to deer, which we deal with a lot. And I also divided this one, which I believe is elegance. It's like a blue foliage and I have it there and I put another one back there. And then this yellow one is called Fragrant Bouquet. And I got this one at Walmart recently. And then I have a couple of other hosta that are in the back here. And this one is called Yellow Polka Dot Bikini. And when I was actually uh, removing it from the planter where I had it and placing it here, a very tiny little segment fell off and I planted it somewhere else, right back of there under the cloche. We'll see what happens. We'll see if it takes. I had a little root on it, so maybe it'll be okay. And then this one here is the um, Olive Bailey Langdon, and it's also really small, so I put a cloche over it to protect it. And here is where I have the other peony, and this one is the uh, Julia, Julia Ann. So I am happy with the progress on those, considering they will bear root. They're looking really great. Project update. Last night we were able to pick up some more cobblestone off of Facebook Marketplace. So we're gonna end up replacing all of this Lowe's edging stone on this right side shed bed because it blends into our, or leads into our Japanese maple garden. So we want it to be consistent. So that's what we're gonna do. Everything is looking really nice and happy after being planted. The weather's been fairly cool, which has been helpful. We grabbed a total of a hundred stones at a dollar a piece. So that was really, really a good find. And so we just kind of placed these stones. None of these are permanently in yet. They're just kind of laid here. So we have an idea of how much stone we need. So we need a little bit more flagstone to finish off the path. And we need a little more cobble to finish outlining this bed. I also placed two um, Hakoni or Hakonikloa um, for Japanese forest grass in the entrance to this bed so that it would be um, consistent on either end of the walkway. And this is going to be another really large bed. Um, it's going to go all the way up to the corner of the shed. And so we're still working on refining the shape, but it was helpful to place these stones so that we kind of, uh, again, can gauge how much stone we still need to collect. So this is an ongoing project. You know, we're gonna keep going with collecting stone and removing sod as time allows. And then once this bed is complete, we'll end up with this sort of grassy path here, which is wide enough for George to be able to drive the lawn tractor through and then it'll be bordered by this woodland bed which eventually I will add some hosta along the edge here so that it hopefully will mimic what I will do here on this side. I think it's all going to turn out really well but it's going to be something that's going to be done over the next couple of years. I hope you enjoyed this video and this update. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.